Now, thanks for staying with us. The purpose behind positioning is to create an appealing image that leverages a brand's unique strength, or in today's area of focus, a person's unique strength. Positioning for success must be deliberate, and for us to succeed in 2021, off the back of 2020 and all that came with this year, a success strategy must be in place. So my question to every young person watching is, how prepared are you? Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038463. I'm going to bring in our guest like in one or two minutes. I just want to quickly hear your thoughts and Maurice's thoughts. How prepared are you for 2021? Let me use uh, Niger English. I'm gingered. <laughs> you are gingered, right? I'm so, I'm, so, I'm so ready for 2021 because 2020 opened my eyes to so many things that you can do online. Hmm. And as well as, apart from the brick and mortar interaction, yeah. mm -hmm. you can also do a lot of things online. So I am looking forward to 2021. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where I can do I love a the blend fact that you're, of you, both. Yeah, you, you, you have such a positive outlook. Absolutely. It. Unlike a lot of people that are saying, come 2021, come let me just <laughs> warn you now. <laughs> Maury, let me come to you. How prepared are you for 2021? How strategic are you? I'm actually also excited for what is to come. Mm -hmm. You know, but then if anything that 2020 has taught me is that man plans, only God approves. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm not going to anything to my chest but you know mm -hmm. i have like stuff that i want to work on and i'm not going to procrastinate i'm actively actively going to chase them but i also have it at the back of my mind that anything can happen at any time exactly you know but i'm i'm excited for what's to come absolutely yeah. absolutely i think I, I love what you said you know the truth is Honestly speaking, I think at some point, I, I can't remember who we had when the lockdown was really, really in the heat of COVID mm -hmm. in Nigeria, when I was asking that, is there any point even planning at all, right? Mm -hmm. Because all the plans that we made, everything just scattered. Like, so that's why when Maury is saying God actually, man plans, but it is God, God that is eventually did. Exactly. Yeah. So let me bring in our guest, Ayola Jolayami. Ha, um, has distinguished himself as a man blessed with the gift of creativity, idea development, strategic leadership, and management. He is the managing director of Riverbank Technologies and Engineering Services Limited, the master franchise owner of CAD Center Training Services Private Limited, the world's largest providers of computer-aided design training. And he's joined us live via Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us, Ayola. Thank you so much, Awai. It's been a pleasure seeing you again, and uh, happy Merry Christmas in advance. Yes, so we're so excited. I was just saying to Isi that it's been <laughs> ages that we saw you, so we're so happy to have you back um, on the show. So Ayola, you, you were listening you so in. You're listening in on our conversation and how we're talking about, you know, positioning. You know, I watch your, you know, I follow you closely, and I, I, I see how you Thank do you. so many things, you know, especially when it comes to the youth and all of that. Um, is there any point at all, you know, planning for 2021, given that how 2020 dealt with all of us, you know, is there any point planning? At <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, th thank you so much. I, I mean, we can but plan because the truth of the matter is no matter how much we say or oh, the world has uh, shifted or things have happened that were not part of our plan. The fact that we had a plan made it easier for many people to really then pivot, like I would say, mm -hmm. because there was something you wanted to achieve. There was a goal set forward. So what was changing was the how, the what was not changing. So, exactly. you know, I, I know for many people, they suddenly became survivors. Like, let's just <laughs> let's just walk through the year and not die, you know, but... Mm. <laughs> But I think the most important thing was that there was a goal, there was a plan, there was something that wanted to be achieved. And then what really changed was the how. Uh, so for those who were, who were value adding, you know, maybe we're in training or you are in solution or in provision of uh, services, mm -hmm. there was now a place of you thinking of how best do I improve what I do? How best do I reach my clients or my, or my market within the time I still have without having to create um, a problem of losing out completely? So. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's still very important to plan. I, I mean, that, that cannot be overemphasized in any way. Absolutely. Okay, so if we were to now say that we want to go by the conversation, the topic for the day, you know, there is positioning, right? And, you know, no matter how, um, um, how prepared we, we are or how whatever it is that we are, you've mm -hmm. gotten all the skills, 
if we are not positioned in that place for success, you know, how would it even materialize? So if you were to go by the topic, right, where do you start from in terms of positioning? You know, if you say you want to position yourself as a young person for today's world for success, where do you start from? So first thing first, thing first would be to know exactly what, what are you positioning yourself for before you know where to position yourself. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? So what are you selling? What, are you, what need are you meeting? What problem are you solving? What questions are you answering? So the first thing first is to, is to know your what, right? So mm -hmm. why, what exactly am I doing? So when you have that answer, then you can think about how to reach the people that you are meant to provide that service for, which is where the issue of positioning comes to play. Now, positioning in the, in the real sense of it is making yourself, I mean, visible to those who need your product or your service, you know, yeah. and in this day and age, to be honest, you cannot run away from the, from digital space. You cannot run away from digital space, whether you're selling small scale, medium scale or large scale goods or services, as small as your WhatsApp status. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people use that as a place of conversations, mm -hmm. but you forget that you have people who are stored on your phone as contact. Mm -hmm. And that's a ready marketplace for one. It's a ready marketplace. So how you position yourself even on, on as simple as your WhatsApp status determines how you are perceived because positioning determines perception. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at it from the perspective of, okay, my WhatsApp status, my Instagram story, the fleet, I mean, take it from Twitter, every person, every every angle, where the way you're perceived will determine what price is paid for what you're offering, which is why you will see two people selling the same product, but selling at different price points, mm -hmm. because one is perceived as premium while the other is perceived as common. Mm -hmm. So you need to now ask yourself, am I, am I positioning myself in a way where people can see me as premium or am I positioned as somebody who is, who is selling for just the, the everyday person? So it's very important to look at it from that perspective. So the, the place where you're selling to uh, matters a lot. So you cannot go on Twitter and say you're selling wigs and stuff like that. I mean, you know that people need to see what they are buying. So, you know, Instagram is the place to go. Absolutely. So are running a blog, a blog. You know, so that's what you, you know, so it's very important to know what platform is most suitable for what product or service you're mm -hmm, selling, mm -hmm. you know, and I also tell people very importantly, one very important value or very important element of positioning is messaging. So how do you craft your story? How do you tell your story? Mm -hmm. How do you have people see or perceive what you're doing mm -hmm. when it comes to the issue of positioning? Your story must be well crafted and there must be passed across in the simplest form that the person who is buying from you mm -hmm. sees what you're, you're, you're offering them very quickly without any form of ambiguity. So you position it matters. So from the what to the why, mm -hmm. then to the how. So it's very important to know that there's a process to how positioning can be b better done and done to actually get value and result that is very lasting. Fantastic. Okay. So you've actually done justice to that question on... Um, what um, Ua asked. So the key thing I want to ask you, and you talked about digital space. Um, we can't actually avoid digital space currently, which I totally agree with you. But are there key skills that individuals can actually tap into in the digital space? For example, a lot of people believe that we have um, um, skills such as um, being a lawyer or a doctor, which was the conservative idea we had in the past. But today, a lot of people are going into the digital space to know more. Data but that, science, yes, data, data analysis. There's so many skills <laughs> so many online that people can learn. So are there key skills that individuals can actually tap into for to, the learn, future. to learn for um, okay, so, I mean, thank, thank, thank you so much. One of the things that I believe is very, very critical as it comes to the entry level, let me just put it that way, yeah. is that you must know how to write. Hmm. Right. I mean, it's just very as simple and basic as you need, you need to know how to communicate in writing. Okay. So you must be able to pass across your message very simply and very, uh, you know, concisely. So that, that's number one. Number two is that you must understand how the digital space works. So if you want, you can just take, you know, a very simple entry level digital marketing course, very simple entry level digital marketing course. So you understand what is called search engine, you know, optimization. You know what is search engine marketing. You know how to check your Google Analytics. You know how to use your location. You know how to use demographics and you know psycho psychography. You know how to use all those. I mean, I mean, they're just basic. 
Because sometimes, you know, I, I, I tell people that you're, you're literally winking in the dark. Yes, you're on the digital space, but nobody knows what you're doing because you're not actually speaking in the right rooms. Hmm. So you need to actually be digitally literate. So these courses are available online. And for most of them, they're actually free. You know, Google has made a lot of these programs free. Facebook has done the same thing. There are quite a lot of programs available for free that will at least introduce you to the basics, the entry level of digital marketing. And trust me right now, it is not a soft skill. Hmm. Let's remember this. Digital marketing or digital uh, literacy is a life skill hmm. because in the years to come, your survival or, or, of yourself and your business in the real world would depend on how much of this space you can make use of depending on how much of this skill you have actually harnessed for yourself. So it's very, very important that we don't joke with uh, this basic skill. So from digital marketing to data analysis, to data mining, to data crunching, you know, to all of that web management. I mean, good thing is, I mean, with a lot of applications now, a novice who just understands basic computer appreciation can actually build a website for themselves. You know, there oh, are yes. many, 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 many site building platforms now. So you can actually build your own website yourself. You can set up your own e-commerce yourself. You can link up all your social media handles to that platform yourself without much knowledge. You know, so really there just has to be that willingness to learn and more importantly, the willingness to adapt to the changes of this world because it's fast happening. And whether we like it or not, we have to catch up with it. Absolutely, we need to catch up. All right, so Mori, are you there? <laughs> I'm here. Okay, so Ayala, from your perspective, is it um, feasible, is it possible for an idea or a business to thrive without, you know, being on the online space? Because I know that it's not everybody that is on the internet, you know, but now when somebody wants to open a, a business, the first thing they're thinking is, let me open an Instagram account. So I just mm -hmm. want to know how feasible it is um, to have, you know, an idea or a business without putting it on the um, online space. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Maureen. Uh, if you remember very much well, at the beginning, I mentioned that the very first thing you need to understand is the what, right? Mm. What am I selling and to whom am I selling? Mm. So when you have a good understanding of the what, which is, this is exactly what I'm selling. Okay, so I'm selling something that doesn't require me being, being on the digital space. That means that my target audience are not on the internet. So somebody who is selling to the bottom of the pyramid, for instance, and by, by no means any form of derogatory use of word, but the, the, the largest population of Nigeria are actually at the bottom of the pyramid. So you're looking at people that are selling, uh, you're selling goods to who are really not, um, you know, they, they can't even afford a mobile phone, right? Mm -hmm. So what they want to do is just to survive. So you're thinking from that perspective and you're looking at it, like, oh, you know what? On this particular product I'm selling, I'm selling to the people that don't need to be on the digital space. So I'm selling to those who are within that band of, you know, probably earning about a dollar a day. So you're thinking from that perspective, you don't really need to be on the digital space to sell to those kind of people. So your target audience, the people you're selling your market to, the people you're selling your services to, determines how, uh, how much of your of, of, the, of the digital space you are serving or servicing. So it's very, very important to first and foremost know that, okay, am I selling to, to do that are online or offline? So very important, very, very important. Okay, so uh, we're just gonna go on a very quick break because um, I want to come to the point of education, right? Um, okay. You said we should learn the data mining, data this, data that. I want to understand how you know, with our epileptic educational structure in Nigeria, how this will be feasible. But we'll go on that short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. <laughs> 